These images of insects taken virtually directly into the sun using the eaves of a house to shield direct sunlight from the camera. The wing arrangement depends on the angle the insect is viewed and the shutter speed has something to do with it as well which will be tested later. These are all insects. One on the lower right hand corner could be a grass seed moving quickly across the view of the camera. We intend to set out not to disprove the rod phenomena but to see whether it really does exist. Try different cameras. Rods are cigar shaped objects that are anywhere from 12 inches in length up to 100 or more feet in length. They travel at extremely high velocities, barely visible with the naked eye unless you know what they look like, because they must be traveling at hundreds of miles per hour. And these objects, at first we thought, you know, we thought they were uh, aircraft of some kind or insects, you know. I, I got a fax earlier today from Arizona, from MUFON in Arizona. Uh -huh. And they said, what you think are rods are insects. Okay. Going in, I was already under the microscope as far as scrutiny is concerned. You know the way it is. One bug in the works, and it's all over your credibility is down the tube. <laughs> One bug. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to make sure, and we, we started filming at 1 10,000th shutter speed, where when an insect flies by directly close to the camera, or a few feet away, or even a little farther distance, or a bird, um, at 1 10,000th frames per second, you can distinguish what an insect is. When you go frame by frame, you get one single frame that's a very clear image of an insect, whether it's real close to the camera, whether it's far away, and whether it travels fast. At that same shutter speed, when a rod passes by, it is a rod. This is a real-time piece of footage. Under these circumstances, a lot of rod footage is filmed. There's a lot of grass seed, insects moving at various speeds, and a lot of cobweb. Sometimes this type of cobweb is mistaken for angel hair. Some are shorter and some are longer. This depends on the distance from the camera and the speed of the insect. Normal shutter speed, 150th of a second. Slow motion footage at 3 to 5 frames per second will show the movement of the insect leaving the typical wing arrangement that is sometimes seen on what is referred to as rods. You may notice some of the, like that larger one there, is very broad in its wingspan. The quicker they move through the view of the camera, the longer the trail. Others are much longer because they're closer to the camera and passing through the field of view much quicker. But that is typical characteristics of videotaping of insects. Now we need to compare these insects with some of the rod footage and try various cameras to see whether we can establish whether these rods are actually insects or whether the rods are separate to the insects and really exist. We need to try a high quality digital camera. This one has broadcast quality.
at this stage it hasn't been tested as far as uh, capturing rods or stopping freeze frame insects at ten thousandths of a second but uh, we will try this one as a high quality digital camera camera was set up with a nice open view and let free roll for one hour it was adjusted so that the view was as you see it Sometimes you see two images, it's a duplicate of one insect. To remedy this, I deinterlaced the still image and was able to capture the original just one insect and get a closer look at it. Some of these closer ones are beetles and you can see the sun reflecting off the top of the beetle. careful to identify them properly. This particular single object only appeared in one frame. It was very fast moving and the camera was that good it was able to freeze frame this one single frame is a good indication that the camera is worthy of trying to photograph and videotape rods. It almost appears to be a sphere. You can see the sunlight on the top going into the shadow underneath. There were beetles flying around this particular day.
have to consider motion when we're taking video footage of a fast moving object. We have the tape speed which is constant, NTSC 30 frames per second, PAL 25 frames per second. The shutter speed is adjustable but constant once doing the video footage. And we have movement of the object through the camera view depending on the distance it is. These all have to be considered. All the motions and movement within the camera have to be considered. The setup of the camera inside looks something like this. Through the viewfinder we see motion with movement from the object and also camera movement. Between the camera lens and the videotape we have the shutter. The shutter is a motion that is variable but has to be considered when analysing video footage frame by frame. The faster we set the shutter you can see by the image that it makes a little difference to what you see. The fast shutter is effective in stopping the motion quicker. This is a single object, not at very great altitude, but there's a, an excessive camera movement. This is typical of a lot of footage that is taken and it is something we'll use as a comparison. Slow motion of that real-time footage shows this single sphere object leaving a motion trail. This trail varies in shape and length depending on the amount of movement of the object or the camera. Just because the trail is that shape does not mean that the object is that shape. And this is something that has to be also considered during single frame analysis. This object is a faster moving object. It is also a single sphere. It is leaving a motion trail as well, but the single object is broken up into individual spheres. The motion trail depends on the amount of movement. Now we see that the single sphere has broken up and divided into at least 12 individual opposing spheres. What has caused this? It's caused by motion. The motion of the object causing the trail and the motion of the shutter speed dividing the single object up into opposing spheres similar to what is seen in the rod footage. So analysing an individual frame is not exactly what you see is what you get you're not actually videotaping what is really there. You have to take into consideration the movement and motion of all these functions of the video camera and movement of the camera. This simulation of an insect flying at four flaps per second eight flaps per second you can see the shape very similar to insects videotaped naturally the insect wings are beating a lot faster than that but the effect is very similar the beating of the wing and the shutter speed is giving the images that we see in a single frame
thing looked organic, it looked alive. So I was trying to think of, of what was something consistent, you know, that would carry on through all the different rods that we were seeing over a period of years. When you started looking at Brian Williams' shot, you could really make out that this was a, a single membrane or a continuous fin. We look at the rods, the rods themselves with their body don't undulate like a fish, but instead their body's relatively stiff and their fins do the undulating. And the first thing that came to my mind as far as like a, a model of what I was picturing and I recognized a fish I'd seen a long time before and it's called a black ghost knife fish. The scientific name for the fish is Apternotus albifrons. Its main means of propulsion is an anal fin, which is the fin that runs along the bottom of the body from right behind the head where the gill slits are almost all the way to the very tip of its tail and it keeps its body stiff.